better buy this iPhone or whatever it is, or else nobody's going to like you or you're going to be missing out. FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. FOMO. We live in a cultural environment of fear. We live in a health environment of fear. Ebola and epidemics and HIV and, and germs and genetics and cancer. Everywhere we turn, we live in a health environment of fear. That's why I call this program The Bright Side, by the way, because I want us to know, I want everybody listening to know that we don't have to live in a health environment of fear. We don't have to live in a political environment of fear. We don't have to live in a medical environment of fear. We don't have to live in a cultural environment of fear because we control our fear response. If we're sick, if we've got a chronic long-term degenerative disease, rest assured we're living in a body and a biochemistry of fear. If you're listening to news or talk radio or you're participating in Trumpian politics and you find yourself in fear, stop listening. Change the station. Turn off the radio. Turn off the TV. Have you ever noticed how much awful stuff is on the news? That awful stuff that's on the news that mostly is completely r irrelevant to our lives and serves us in no way except to make us scared. Are our lives in any way any better because we know that police in Wilmington, Delaware shot a man in a wheelchair? Does that change your life at all? What does that do for us except make us fear the police? Do we need to know that a five-year-old boy in Kentucky was killed when he was hit by a school bus? This is what is on CNN. Go to CNN.com. You'll find out that a five-year-old boy in Kentucky was killed when he was hit by a school bus. Now, I don't. That's tragic. Obviously, that's terrible. But do we need to know this? Do we need to know that a Seattle duck boat operator was involved in a, daily, a deadly crash and he was suspended? Now, does this change our lives in any way except now to fear duck boat operators or not to want to get on a boat? Aside from real life and death uh, survival threats, which occur rarely, if ever, somebody chasing us with a gun or a car heading straight for us or a lion that escaped from the zoo looking to make us into his lunch. When was the last time our lives were really at stake by something that we're scared of? For most of us, our fear responses, our disease inducing fear responses are the result of our imaginations. They're based on our, our families, our credit card bills, our children. They're implanted into us by radio show hosts, so-called news. For the most part, our fears, the fears that cause disease, the fears that initiate the hormonal chemistry of disease are beliefs. They're imagination. They're imaginary. And you know what the ultimate fear is? It's interesting because you know, when we hear about fear, we hear about fear of death, fear of public speaking, fear of spiders. There's lots of fears, lots of phobias, but really, behind all of these fears, behind all of the common things that we're afraid of, whether they're imaginary fears or whether they're real fears, there's only one fear, and that is the fear of change. And that itself is related to the unknown. We fear change because we don't know what's next. Human beings have to know what's next. And if we don't know what's next, we get scared. This is what grief is about, by the way. Grief is a type of fear. When someone close to us dies, it initiates this fear of change. How will we be able to live with this new situation where our loved one is no longer with us? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got so much more to say about this fear response and the opposite of the fear response. We'll talk about that uh, when we come back from our break, and we'll talk about it tomorrow as well. And we'll get to your phone calls too. 844-236-6010 is our number. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. And also, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can check out our blog and news stories on both of those both of those sites. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for setting those up. Pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us advertised or you hear us advertised or recommend on the program, you can head right to the website and purchase products right off the site. Or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off of the websites. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470 866 735 2470 Okay, so I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but there's so much stuff to talk about when it comes to the fear response. Do you know there's a relationship between addiction and the fear response? We'll talk about that tomorrow, and then tomorrow we'll talk about the opposite of the fear response. Just like there's two great poles in the body, two uh, great poles of health. You've got health and you've got non-health, or health and disease. You also have a relationship between fear and another pole. 
you have a parasympathetic nervous system that regulates this other pole, and you have a sympathetic nervous system that regulates the fear response, and that is behind our chronic degenerative diseases. We'll talk about this second pole and how you can access it tomorrow on the Bright Side, and we'll talk about addiction as well and how addiction works via, the, via this fear response. Then we'll get into some hardcore hormones that we can use to help support the body's anti-fear response. We'll do all that tomorrow and in the coming days on the Bright Side. Time to hit our phones, 844-236-6010. Carl, the truth raider, what's going on, man? You must really morning, want to talk to Pharmacist Ben. You've been on hold Absolutely. Forever. What's hey, going I've on? I've got bro? skin and eye allergies going on. Okay. And I think I'm a little bit allergic to my little girl. <laughs> you are back. <laughs> Oh, your little, is that your little girl? Oh, that's sweet. I don't want you to be allergic to her. Here's what you do. And it's funny you said that because Trevor, my producer, and I were just talking in the break about allergies. The uh, Allergies are a manifestation of a hyped-up immune response. And by the way, the immune response is related to fear. And we'll talk about that in the coming days. But from a physical perspective, whenever you're dealing with allergies, whether it's allergies to a cat or whether it's allergies to pollen or whether it's allergies to food, you're dealing with a defensive response. Allergies are the way the body protects itself. Think of the signs of allergies, tearing up, mucus secretion, changes in blood pressure. All of these are ways that the body's attempting to eliminate things. It's a, a, tears are a way the body attempts to wash away things. Mucus is a way that the body attempts to slime away things. High blood pressure is a way that the body attempts to, to, uh, to release white blood cells to the enemy. Uh, all of these are mechanisms. All of these are mechanisms for, I shouldn't say high blood pressure, but blood pressure changes are ways that the body will release white blood cells or open up so that white blood cells can be released. In any case, allergies are a manifestation of a defensive response. So where does most of the immune system reside? In the digestive tract. So in addition to eliminating the stressor, that is, unfortunately, whatever we're allergic to, support your immune health via digestive strategies. Probiotics can be very, very helpful for all allergies, whether they're respiratory allergies, certainly digestive allergies, any kind of allergies, you want to focus on digestive health first and foremost by using the BioLumin Nightly Essence and fermented foods. Apple cider vinegar can help. Also... Um, uh, acidifying the digestive tract with betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E, betaine hydrochloride, pepsin, P-E-P-S-I-N, H-C-L. You can buy those in health food stores. Digestive enzymes can help, the ultimate enzymes, also systemic enzymes. If you want to check out some fine systemic enzymes, go to brightsidehealthproducts.com. Removing, uh, I'm sorry, supporting the immune system and then removing the offending agents. There's also nutrients that will support the immune system, chief among which is vitamin C. Anybody dealing with any kind of allergic response would be wise to be using high doses of vitamin C. By high doses, I mean 5 to 10 grams a day, 5,000 to 10,000 milligrams a day. Yes, I know your standard vitamin C product is 60 milligrams. Even the Beyond Tangy Tangerine will only get you 1,000 milligrams, so you're going to need extra vitamin C. Here's the thing. For all immune issues, think vitamin C, but you want to make sure that you're dividing your dose up because vitamin C will cause some loose stools or cramping or discomfort if you take too much all at once. Zinc is also stupendously important for the immune system, and everybody, unless they're supplementing, everybody's going to be deficient in zinc. 50 milligrams a day. Magnesium is also important for the immune system. Use the Osteo FX. And then last but not least, I love vitamin E for all immune system or allergic issues. 400 to 800 international units a day of mixed tocopherols. Vitamin E, like zinc, by the way, uh, is, not, um, is, not, uh, is a common nutritional deficiency. Most people aren't getting anywhere, anywhere near the zinc or the vitamin E they need from foods because it's not really found in a lot of foods. Thanks for your call, Truth Raider. Appreciate it. And, uh, Hope everything works out for you with your, with you and your little girl there. All right, let's go to KC in Pennsylvania. What's up, KC? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Uh, hey. Thank you, Ben. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that I'm a very big fan of uh, uh, Dr. Alex, Dr. Glendon, and I saw your interview with Dr. Alex. That's how I started looking at your all your YouTube videos. Oh, great. Uh, 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 thank you so much for taking my call. My sure. uh, question is, uh, one and a half years before I got diagnosed uh, as type two diabetic. Okay. And uh, uh, I was so uh, I was so genuine. I don't know all the shows and uh, about the drugs at the time. And my doctor put me on uh, Genumed. That's Genumed. The sugar. Yeah. Genuvia Genova. Are you saying Genova? Uh, uh, Genevia. Geneva. Genevia. Genevia. Yes, I know what you're talking about. 
Uh, yeah. Oh. And okay. um, I, I came back home and after, uh, and he prescribed one uh, blood pressure pill too. Uh, okay. So after taking that one for like 15 days, I started feeling uh, uh, so tired. So I started <laughs> Googling about all these medicines and the uh, side effects, what they put it on uh, online and I got scared and uh, you should. I totally cut down. <laughs> yeah, I totally uh, cut down my medicine at that time. And that's when I started doing the researches. That's how I got into all these uh, uh, videos about uh, you, Dr. Valet, like that. My main question, my main call, reason for this uh, call today is uh, uh, last Thursday, all of a sudden, I, I went out to Walmart and um, I started feeling a little bit dizzy. And like you said, this, I got scared. I got panicked. Yeah. And uh, I came back home and uh, the dizziness didn't go. And uh, uh, my uh, wife is also not that much interested in this kind of uh, medication. So she also got scared. And uh, I went to the ER at the time. Uh, they checked my BP. It was like uh, 220 over oh my gosh. 20. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was, it was very high. How, how uh, can I help you today? Uh, Tell me how I can help you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got I, I, I got all the Yanji D products I started buying from last month. Okay. The only thing what I did uh, is I had the Tangy Tangerine before going out on that day, but I didn't take my time. I took it like a shot, like like a whole. Class. All at once? You did it all at once? Uh, yeah, yeah, all at once. Do you think that might be the reason for this? It could, uh, no, unlikely. The problem with doing the Beyond Tang Tangerine all at once, there's two main problems. Number one, your body will tend to excrete, your, uh, eliminate what you don't use. So if you take it all at once, your body will use some of it, and then it will eliminate the rest, and you'll waste your money. The second problem is, is you may end up with some loose stools or uh, some cramping or bloating. So I recommend that you sip on the BTT all day long. It's not going to cause, it's not going to cause a significant health problem. You just may feel uncomfortable. And you're not going to get the the benefit from it. So you want to sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. And when you run into this stress response, this fear response, the best thing you can do is calm the body down, activate the relaxation nervous system by slow, deep breathing. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking hormone health. On the bright side, if you're interested in checking out uh, my blog posts, which we uh, post once or twice a week, you can go over to my blog, critical health, criticalhealthnews.com, also pharmacistben.com. Of course, you can purchase longevity products right off the website, criticalhealthnews.com, and, uh, and or pharmacistben.com, and or brightsideben.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Mary in Michigan, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Mary. Uh, yeah. No, nope. hi, hi, you're ben. Mary, I'm Ben. <laughs> hi, hi, Mary. Um, uh, I, I'd like your help in, ex in explaining something to my husband. Okay. Okay, he does not, he says, I don't like sweet, so he says, I don't get any sugar. Okay. But he eats enough pasta to kill a horse. <laughs> you know what he can do? Here's a trick for him, and this will help. Have him, when he eats his pasta, instead of swallowing it down, have him take a couple of strands of pasta, keep it in his mouth, and let the enzymes work on the pasta in his mouth, and sugar will start to come out. You have an enzyme in your mouth called, in your saliva called amylase, A-M-Y-L-A-S-E. Amylase breaks down starch into sugar. This is what happens inside the body as well, but he'll know it because he'll taste the sugar. And you could do it with bread or potatoes or any cereal, foods that don't strike you as being sugar. If you let the amylase in your saliva, the, the carbohydrate enzyme in your saliva, break down that pasta, sugar will be released and he'll taste sweet. You can do it with any kind of, any kind of flour or, or a, a starchy kind of carbohydrate. Well, he, and that, he's, he's, he's kind of a... a, a you just kind of have to see it kind of thing. You know what I'm what saying? What do you mean? Well, what I well, was You can read up on it. I mean, just well, read up I on it. Well, what I was hoping to do was, when you look at the package of pasta... It doesn't say it. It's not going to say sugar on there. It'll say carbs. Okay, well, it's, that's what I kind of wanted to ask you. It, can, is there any way of comparing what the label on the pasta says to, say, a, a, a box of sugar cubes? No. You can't do it, except for you the set. You can't do it through calories? I mean, yeah, you can. You can I was about to tell you, you could do it through calories. S but it's still not going to be, it's not going to prove it to them. You know, cal <laughs> uh, it's not going to prove anything. But the, the taste of the sweet will prove it to him. If he'll, he'll taste the sweet himself. 
doesn't okay. matter what it says in the box. He can taste it. So, okay. And also, here's another thing.